I can very easily say in a conservative manner that we are uh, the fastest growing platform. Hello and welcome back to Altcoin Boss Spotlight with me, Leah Heilpan, the show where we speak to entrepreneurs, innovators and thought leaders in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. Joining us today is Sandeep Nawal, the co-founder and COO of Matic Network, the network looking to make the scalability of decentralized applications possible. Don't forget to let us know in the comment section below who you want us to interview next and what topics you want us to cover. And also, if you enjoy the show, then hit the like button. Sandeep, so great to have you today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you doing? Uh, thanks, Leah, for inviting me here. Uh, I'm doing good. Good, good. Uh, staying safe and healthy and inside. Good, good. I'm pleased to hear. It's such a crazy time right now. So um, I think if you're safe and healthy, then you're doing well. So I want to start by understanding what Matic Network actually does and where Ethereum comes into it. Yeah, so so Matic Network is primarily a layer two, uh, you know, a layer two execution platform. So when I say execution platform, you mean... I mean that, you know, you can execute things like, you know, transfers, smart contracts and things like that, that you do on, on a blockchain, but at layer two. That means that you have a base layer chain, which is very strong and decentralized and everything. And then you have a layer two, which is safe, secure, but is very, very scalable. Uh, in fact, extremely, uh, you know, scalable, uh, hundreds of times more scalable than the base layer. And uh, that's where the Ethereum comes in, that Ethereum currently is the, is the is the first base layer below Matic's uh, you know layer two platform. So you know Ethereum is here. Matic layer two works on it. And any any anybody who's developing on top of Ethereum, they can very easily in a very plug and play manner use a Matic to you know bring scalability to their application. Yeah, and I think it's interesting um, that you you know you're focusing on scalability um, because we saw what happened with CryptoKitties. So how many then apps are actually using Matic? So uh, in terms of the number of dApps that are coming onto Matic, we are, you know, already one of the fastest, not like I can very easily say uh, in a conservative manner that we are uh, the fastest growing platform in that sense. And, uh, you know, we already have around 40 to 50 applications which are deployed on our testnet and our, and our on our beta mainnet. And we are still yet to go into the public, uh, you know, full uh, mainnet. And I think that that number is going to be exploding from there. And also, uh, one of the bigger things is that, uh, you know, most most of the, uh, like many larger games, I would say that the leading games, leading dApps in the space are interacting with us in some form or the other. And, uh, you know, for example, virtual spaces. Uh, so we almost have all the top players in the virtual, uh, you know, space uh, building on top of uh, Matic. So, for example, we have Decentraland. We have, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, Somnium Space, which re who recently declared that they'll be moving to Matic. We have, uh, you know, Sandbox, up and coming, one of the largest space in this, in this. So that way, like in terms of adoption, we are seeing a pretty huge wave of applications who would be using Matic soon. So a lot of expansion there, um, clearly. But I want to understand yeah. why um, decentralized applications are actually important. Because when we look at um, decentralized finance, for example, we can sort of understand, well, you know, it comes down to having that autonomy and, you know, getting rid of centralization of central banks and all of those sorts of things. But why do we need decentralized applications? Yeah. So, see, one of the biggest thing is like, and, and, and an easier way to understand that part is that, uh, you know, if you see... Uh, one of the biggest problems that uh, the, 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 in, this, in this information age, the data related problems that have happened, uh, you know, like, for example, the, uh, the Cambridge Analytica kind of problem, uh, which happened where Facebook was actually selling your data. Uh, similarly, for yeah. example, on gaming. So recently, there was, uh, there was a situation where, you know, one particular prominent gamer on a platform. And, you know, when I say gamer, gamers, spend a lot of time of their of their lives uh, you know into their games it might sound for non gamers it might sound that oh it, it's at the end of the day it's a, it's a game but for the gamers it's actually their second life and uh, you know the gaming industry and like everybody knows and there's a netflix documentary on that that it, it's actually bigger than the, the entire of 
like Hollywood and, you know, NFL and then, you know, the bigger sporting industries of the US combined, right? So it's a huge industry. And there, these gamers have a lot of in-game assets and, uh, mm. you know, in-game currencies and all that, which they earn over months and months, at times years uh, of hard work on that and playing the, those games. And then recently we had, uh, you know, re- not recently, in fact, there have, there have been multiple times that there have been scenarios where, uh, you know, somebody did something and then the gaming organization banned the user altogether and, you know, years and years of oh, it, wow, it, okay. his, his uh, you know, uh, earnings on that game, you know, suddenly are fortified and all that. So that's kind of a very centralized behavior. Similarly, I, I talked about the data, for example, you know, we have all our lives actually in public with, uh, you know, the... The, the sites like Facebook and, and things like that. Similarly, yeah. go to YouTube, right, for example. So the content producers, and yes. you would you would know that, you know, much better than me that, you know, YouTube. And actually, my wife also recently uh, in the last, uh, I think, uh, one or two months, she has been, uh, you know, uh, exploring YouTube side of things. And in spite of the fact that they have a large number of views and all that, the revenues that they make uh, are, you know, very, very yeah. small because YouTube charges like a huge, like 50% out of that. And then also you have no clarity of, uh, you know, what YouTube is saying, whether it's correct or not, whether you have like, uh, you know, 100,000 views, but they will say that, okay, the ads were shown to only 5% of those views, right? So, and you have no way to ascertain things like that. So I think with the way, you know, where the situation or the 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 kind of uh, world we are moving towards is where we spend a large amount of our time on uh, on our laptops on the internet uh, you know there will mm. be more and more demand of these decentralized and more democratic kind of platforms and that's where the decentralized applications come into play yeah absolutely and i think right now as you mentioned youtube it's just such um a key issue we've seen um a lot of youtubers with um you know they've had their life work kind of deplatformed yeah. um so yeah so i think it becomes particularly important right now. And um, interesting to think, you know, a lot of assets as well on gaming um, sites and things like that, um, you know, you want to have that autonomy there. So it's it's similar, as yep. you say, then. Um, it's pretty much fighting for the same fight um, as finance Correct. then. Um, looking at mass adoption then, because mass adoption is something um, which you guys are really interested um, in tackling. So what are the um, what are the issues against it? What are the hurdles stopping mass adoption? And how do you guys actually plan to um, fix that? Yeah, so I think the biggest hurdle, uh, and, and in very simple terms, it's user experience. And, you know, whether it's scalability, whether it's the transaction cost, we believe that all of that falls into the uh, scalability uh, paradigm. So, like, sorry, the, the user experience uh, kind of situations or the problems with the, uh, with the user. So, at the end of the day, because, you know, nowadays, even my mom uses a pay, payment application, like, you know, in US, you have Venmo. In India, we have Paytm, Google Pay, things like that. And uh, you know, they are they are getting used to that that uh, those kind of apps. And even us, we use all the centralized apps, and we, they have a superlative user experience today. And if we are asked to switch to a you know to a DApp or a decentralized application, which has like you know not even half the good user experience that we had today, and uh, mm. you know with other applications, they are not going to use it. And then you know, let's say there was a decentralized Twitter. And if you ask me that, uh, you know, I have to pay uh, 20 cents or half a dollar to just make a tweet, I'm not going to use that, right? And then that too, yeah, you know, even when I when I spend that money, I have to wait for one minute before I am confirmed that, okay, my tweet went through, uh, you know, things are not going to, uh, going to pick up that option. So that's where we, uh, you know, our endeavor is, uh, we, we we strive for providing the scalability, which is the fundamental reason why this user experience goes for a toss, which includes the scalability includes your, you know, throughput throughputs, like how many transactions you can do within one second, like the apps can have very massive traffic and they need their transactions to go through. Second, it includes the, uh, you know, the turnaround time, like for example, uh, like on Ethereum or any good blockchain, like Bitcoin takes seven minutes, but even Ethereum, it takes like, 15 to 20 seconds to confirm a transaction and uh, you know that mm-hmm. is that's going to be uh, you know slightly uh, I mean that, that's not good for user experience and the third thing is the transaction cost like you know even when you have we have yes. some sort of yeah. uh, you know uh, congestion in the network the transaction costs cost shoot up to like you know one dollar two dollar for single transaction so all three yeah. areas Matic provides a huge uh, advantage for the applications and then applications can actually focus on building their user experience rather than worrying about 
uh, these things. Yeah, and I totally agree with you, um, particularly when it comes to user experience, because it's something I just seem to be having the same conversation over and over again. You know, I'm having trouble with this. This isn't clear. Why is this happening? This is taking so long. Yep. Um, and absolutely, you know, I'm somebody that's already in the space and yep. I'm having a difficult time. Um, so absolutely, I can't imagine people looking to get into the space thinking, wow, you know, what, what is attractive about this? It's just almost too difficult. Yep. Um, but looking at mass adoption, just sort of sticking with that for a sec, because Matic actually states that um, the current blockchain ecosystem isn't um, prepared for mass adoption. Um, so therefore you guys um, looked at, you know, scale it as explained. But how necessary do you think this actually is given that mass adoption seems to be quite far away at the moment? See, I mean, I am actually not a very big subscriber of that uh, because, you know, we have been in the last, in these kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, state of adoption currently for the last two to three years. So it's natural to, you know, for, 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 for the normal people and especially the people who are invested in the space, uh, you know, to feel like, oh, the mass adoption is not coming. But I feel that, you know, we are closer than ever to achieve those things. Uh, and also, like, interestingly, even with the, with the iPhone, like the iPhone apps and Android apps, like, I think they came into the space like 2005, 2006, 2007 ish, uh, 2007 ish, I, I think. And then, you know, only the, the number of apps and good apps actually started exploding only in around 2010, 2011, where everybody started thinking that, okay, you yeah. know, now we need, we, you know, apps, apps are the new thing. And then it was like a kind of a exponential curve. And I think, you know, we are still in that value discovery mode in, in decentralized applications. Uh, so I feel that one is that, so it takes time for the applications and the developers to discover those value you know values out of it first is that uh, which adds a lot of value to the end user secondly a simple statistics is that any successful app on any mobile platform be it iphone mm. or uh, you know android it's actually the ratio of successful applications is around 10000 to 1 and if you see the the whole of blockchain space there are in total, you know, not more than 5,000 applications. Yeah, so if you see that there are not many developers, like, you know, forget about the la users later on, but there are not many developers developing that kind of application first in the first place. So first is that we need some winners in the space, wherein some developers, some particular applications goes really viral. Like CryptoKitty was a big thing. Like once CryptoKitty, you know, came in the whole gaming space, you know, completely change everybody started thinking that oh this this can be the next big thing like so you need winners like that well, and now in the as i said that we are more closer than ever we have the developer tooling we have the scaling solutions we have the user experience solutions over there now it's about time for you know some of the developers to come up with killer apps and i think in gaming space it's already happening Okay, so definitely important just because of how quickly the space is growing um, and all the new different types of games that you said are going to um, be needing this sort of technology um, as the next few months and even years go by. So I do want to go back just a second and talk about user experience um, because you guys are, of course, focusing on that. You have your own design studio, um, but it seems so obvious, doesn't it, that user experience is just that important. But why do you think not a lot of people are then tackling this? Yeah, because see, first of all, uh... But they, you know, there have been attempts, like it's not like people are not worried about this problem, people are trying to do this, but blockchains inherently, uh, the biggest part is that they are very complex things. Like you have a private key, you know, public key, nobody is your bank, once you do a transaction, you know, it goes through. I think, you know, uh, there was a tweet uh, on, on Twitter which went viral that, you know, somebody was saying that even if I have done hundreds and hundreds of those transactions, even now mm. when I'm when I'm about to do a transaction, like, you know, it's kind of a heart attack kind of situation, especially if it's a large uh, money uh, transaction, because there is no, you know, there's no recourse to, to, to any kind of fault, right? So, you know, those kind of things are inherently uh, problematic, the management of keys and all that problematic, because you are your on your, you are your own bank. So you have a lot of responsibility, but then again, the tech needs to solve that. So you have solutions like ENS, where rather than using an address, you use a particular, uh, you know, you have your address book, you have ENS names where you select uh, the names just like you were selecting from your contact book. So things like that are, are being worked out. The second part is that because the earlier, uh, you know, kind of applications were more like wallets and money kind of applications and you have, you had more like traders and all. So many of those 
people actually put efforts from their side to understand those things because they are dealing with money they are you know investing and all that more of the speculation side of things so many of those apps wallets you know might not have had you know that kind of uh, incentive to go for, for the extreme like kind of user experience now with all that kind of complexity now you bring in the user experience of the app also like the app first the app needs to be usable and then you need to put in or plug in a good user experience on top of that and then you you also need to solve the you know the scalability issues of the the blockchain which i just said that yeah. you know the throughput the turnaround time and the transaction cost yeah. so and transaction cost is something that unless and until you start paying the transaction cost like you know if you are doing a transaction on my app if you have to pay you are anyways you are still going to uh, you know feel like it has a bad user experience even if it looks good it flows fast everything is fine but still you have to pay money right so but now there are multiple design patterns for example meta transactions wherein the end user doesn't need to pay for their transaction the the business owner actually plugs it into their business model and then the then they pay for the gas fees so meta transaction is you actually sign some transaction and i as a business i relay your transaction onto the blockchain add gas fees to that now matic has um, spoken about taking um the technology to governments and particularly in india so how has the current um, situation with the coronavirus actually affected your expansion? So I think in terms of, because we are still in the mainnet, you know, kind of launch mode. So most of our teams uh, were, you know, all hands on deck, you know, completely focused on the, uh, on the development and all. On the government and enterprise sites, we have, you know, we have been uh, kind of creating the, creating the background or creating the foundation for those kind of interactions with the governments and enterprises. But that's still in the you know kind of nascent stages. But yes, of course, like the because for the, most of these enterprise and government kind of scenarios, you need personal meetings and you need that relationships mm. to build before they you can convince them to you know do or or, or launch some sort of product on yeah. on on a particular on particular blockchain. So that has affected in some form. Uh, but I think you know the the video calls and these things are becoming a norm. So I think in the longer run, it is yeah. good. That if you can get the you know meetings and everything from the government and enterprises, and then you know build the relationship, and then maybe you can take personal calls later on or personal meetings later on to finally close the deals and all that with the government. Then just finally, when can we expect the launch of Mainnet? And uh, just briefly, what are some of the challenges that you're facing other than not being able to have that you know interaction uh, in person? So, uh, you know, I would not say that these are like. I would not say any particular kind of problems due to the coronavirus situation. I would say that we were, you know, for our mainnet launch, we, we yesterday uh, only we closed our stage one, which was, uh, you know, kind of a incentivized testnet program wherein public, you know, validators come and they run the nodes and, you know, we try to find problems so that before we go to mainnet, we have very thoroughly tested the network. So there was a stage zero, stage one, and, and now we are in stage two. So stage one took quite some time for us because, you know, uh, due to the coronavirus situation, many people were, you know, not available. Uh, this was the time when, you know, we launched the stage one when the coronavirus thing was just exploding. So at that point, there was a lot of co coordination issues and all that, which took, <clears throat> which actually, you know, led us to take like at least three to four weeks more than what we had uh, stipulated. But now we have launched mm -hmm. the stage two and, you know, there were a lot of, you know, bugs and kind of small small issues found in our stage one we fixed all of that our technical teams are working like you know day in day in day out to you know iron out all the issues so i think we are very very close on that the stage two is ongoing already and uh, i think it's a matter of you know days or you know some weeks before we actually go live with our mainnet sandeep thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure having you um on the program with us today um and also i wish you the best of luck um in the next few weeks with the expansion i think it's gonna be great Thanks, thanks Leah and the Altcoin Bus team. Thank you so much.